Welcome to the Olive Branch Community Church. It's great to have you with us here today. If you have never visited us at the Olive Branch in person, we encourage you to do that. Like connect with some real people in real life. You know, it's just different. Church isn't church until you've connected with others. And so while we're happy that you have joined us here today virtually, we would love, love, love to see you in person. Make sure you introduce yourself. Um, today, Pastor Jeremiah will be speaking on a message entitled, watch the throne and it is one of those things that if we don't watch who is on the throne of our lives we often put other stuff other than god and so it's going to be a great message that will help you really grow in the lord and um and be able to serve him so without further ado let's spend some time worshiping him um god is worthy to be praised
Good morning, Olive Branch family, and welcome to our service again. So glad that you're here this morning and watching online. And we want to know where you're watching from, so you can definitely let us know in the comments uh, below. But if you came to watch Pastor Ken, uh, he is not here for the next couple of weeks. So I get the privilege to be able to share a message with you. And as you can see, I know it's the end of summer, but, you know, we're going to still keep the positive energy that summer is going to stay with us for a bit. So I had to wear my summer shirt. Um, and hopefully you've been enjoying your vacation. Uh, but this morning, I really wanted to talk about the heart and talk about worship. And before I start in, um, many of you know that uh, a goal of mine uh, or a career choice that I had was or wanted to go into was to become a doctor. And that was the passion of mine as well as the desire of my family and my parents. And um, you know, uh, I did not become a doctor, and there are reasons of why that I didn't. But I feel like today I'm going to be your helper here in helping you through surgery. I'm not going to be the doctor doing the surgery. I believe God is going to be doing it, but I'm going to be assisting in it. Uh, so close to a doctor, let's just say. Uh, but this morning I want to go into talking about worship. And uh, next week we're going to be talking about something else, which I'll mention later. But I just want to start with this. Worship is our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards us. Let's start off with that. Worship is our love expressed to God as a response to his grace towards us. So let me ask you a question. How many people have, some, uh, how many people have told somebody who you really are? Right? We tell people many versions of ourselves. There's different versions out there of Jeremiah. There's different versions of certain individuals. Or all of us have some sort of version of us that we tell people. But the beauty of it is God really knows who you are. And, be, and he calls us ch our, his children. He calls us his masterpiece. Even though we're probably very, very far from that in the definition of being perfect. And that's the beauty of God is because he's given us two things. He's given us the grace and the mercy to us. And in response to that level of grace and mercy, the only thing we can do is express our love to God because of that level of grace and mercy that he's given us. And that's why for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about who is on the throne of your heart. And this is my message for you, and if you don't really like worshiping now, you're going to hate heaven because, like, that place that everybody's trying to get to, which is heaven, 1,000% of the time, we're going to be worshiping. The whole time. There's nothing else that we're going to do. There's not going to be me feeding you grapes. There's not going to be you flying on clouds or things like that. We are made and built for to worship God in heaven. So here is the training ground for that, and we're going to be talking about that. And so really I believe there's going to be a level of understanding that we need to understand that worship or, well, there's some things that I want to mention about worship, and worship, it's not worship if it's not love. You cannot worship anything that you don't love. And there are many people that will express their love more to a raise in their job than to the God who saved their life. There are those who will love and they will worship and they will express their love to other things than the God who has brought you out of bondage, of that anxiety, of that depression, of the, of the past. You can see that from the children of Israel, and the reason why I believe God calls them the children of Israel is because he, calls, he tells them over and over and over and over again. He says, my children, don't worship anything else except me. I am the God. I'm the God who's brought you out. And he says this billions of times in the Old Testament, and we wouldn't have enough time to read all those scriptures, but there are many times that God says, you need to worship me. And maybe we are expressing our love to something that is not worth or worthy of us expressing our love to. So it's not worship if it's not love, and it's not worship if it's not expressed. So let me get you another one here. It's not love if it's not 
in your heart. And I want to talk about your heart today, and this may be different, but this helped me in my entire life, and I've lived 28 years, so I could say an entire life. But I want everyone just to do a, a favor for me. Just close your eyes real quick and imagine for me what a heart looks like. So a couple seconds. Close your eyes and just give it a moment and think, okay, what does a heart look like for me? What picture pops into your head? Most of the heart looks like something like this, which you see on the screen, it's a picture of a heart emoji. And if you don't know what an emoji is, it's those little pictures that you have on the phone uh, that you could send to, to people. And we call this the mascot of the heart. If you, anybody says, I love you, or anybody talks about the heart, the first or majority of the people will look at this image of representing the heart, but we call that the mascot of the heart. And then some of you, uh, some of you have the heart that looks like this. And when you think about heart, it's an emoji of a heart, but broken. And we're not talking about broken hearts and broken relationships today, but that might be one way that you look at a heart. And then some of you scientists out there, or those who love anatomy, you have a picture like this. You have four chambers, two atrias, two ventricles, and all those shebang there, that's what the heart looks like for you. And the Bible mentions the heart over 800 times in the scripture, and I can believe it's not talking about any of the hearts that I just showed you. So when talking about the heart and the love that pours out of our heart, most of us, even when we're worshiping, we say, God, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And this is your heart, okay? Now here's the thing. In a control center, you got the center throne. Ooh, it's a little uncomfortable, but we're good. <laughs> Hopefully this chair can hold me here. Um, it's a control center. And at the control center, there's a center captain's chair, or I like to call it the throne. And on the throne, there are there, around the throne, there's, there's other aspects that the heart, that the throne will control and will direct. What are those things? It's composed of your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, your character, your intellect, your conscious, and the will. So here's my question to you. Who sits on the throne of your heart? Because from the main chair the captain's chair, the throne, you start directing the emotion, the thoughts, the character, the intellect, the conscious, and the will. And the thing is, this seat is only made for one person. It is not made for anybody else. It is made for one person. And God is supposed to be sitting on the throne of your heart. For many of us, if we took inventory of what guides our heart, something else is sitting on our heart. There's a reason we can't worship because there's either somebody else or something other than God sitting on the throne of your heart. The reason for this is because of the simple little word, idol. I know a lot of us will check out when I say this word, and a lot of Christians out there will check out and say, oh no, I don't have any idols. But before you shut me down, let me give you the definition of what an idol means. An idol is anything else, anything else that takes place of God. Anything that is sitting on the throne of your heart and giving you direction to your life other than God is an idol. Now, let me talk to you about some scriptures on what God says about the heart. And then we'll go into it later. Here, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to, the, to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things that you see th that the way that you see them. People judge by the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 
2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says, You must decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who cheerfully gives. He wants your heart. He, uh, he wants your heart and you only can worship God from your heart because that's where love is and that's why God needs to be at the throne of your heart. And now if he's not in the throne of your heart, Matthew chapter 15 verse 19 where Jesus says, For from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, lying, slander. And Romans 10 verse 10 says, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. That's salvation there. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by opening, decla openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Everything comes from the heart. Everything. That's why a relationship with Jesus is better than anything that you could ever have because he knows where you're going. The thing about the captain's chair or this throne is that you have to have a vision where you're going. The problem is everybody else in this room only can see what's in front of them and only God can see what's going to happen. See, only your emotions can take you so far. Only your thoughts can only show you what's in front of you. Only your character can only show you what's in front of you. Doesn't look in the future, it looks in front of you. But the control center has a vision of where you should go. The control center will direct the emotion, the thoughts, the character, your intellect, your conscience, your will to know where you're going. And only God knows what's going to happen. Sitting on your throne of your heart controls what you do. With sitting on the throne of your heart, it has the final say. Your heart is giving you instruction. Who or what is sitting on your heart is directing you. It is the captain's chair. It is the throne. And here's my title for the sermon is Watch the Throne. Because many of us, are going to have God on the throne of your heart today. You hear the sermon today, and you're gonna have God on your heart. And then by tonight, something else will come and replace God on the throne of your heart. It's almost like a rotation. It's like a punch card. You know, your time card, you punch in and you punch out. Like Sunday is for God, then on Monday it's your job, and then Tuesday it's your marriage, and then Wednesday it's your friends, and then Thursday it's my feelings, and then Friday it's my family, and then Saturday is for sports, and then Sunday morning is for God, and then Sunday night is for Sunday night football, if you're a football fan. And my big point and the big thing that I want you to take away this morning is God is the only one worthy to be on the throne of your heart. Nobody else can sit on this throne because whatever comes from this throne, from this caption chair, where, from the command chair, everything is being directed from here. He is the only one that has paid and gone through, the uh, gone through everything that is necessary for him to be qualified to sit on the throne of the heart. Right? Let me say that again. He is the only one who has paid his life on the cross and has gone through everything that is necessary. The creator, the everything, the alpha, the omega, the provider who is qualified to sit on this throne. Everybody else is amateurs. Everybody else is counterfeit. Everything else is a copycat. Everything else cannot provide you what God can provide you. And you need to make sure he is on their throne. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart. And I love what it says after this. For everything you do flows from it. Above everything else, guard your heart because it will direct your emotions. It will direct your thoughts, your character, your intellect, your conscience, your will. 
Because everything flows from the heart. In the NLT, the New Living Translation, it says, for it determines your course of your life. Many of us have so many other things controlling our heart. I'm not talking about you. I'm not coming after you. I'm talking about what I've seen. My career, once upon a time, used to be the, the, on the throne of my heart. It used to control my emotion. I used to shut myself off because I was so busy with work. My thoughts was thinking about work all the time. My intellect, all I knew, all I did was work and think about work. My character, everything that I, that who I was was gone because it was all consumed by work. Sometimes money could be on this throne of your heart. Your family, your marriage, your relationship. Have you ever thought, you know, if you ever had, you know, you're, you're going through a season of time and God got you through it. And then you have this boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife and they become the throne and they, they sit on the throne of your heart. And then you're like, God, why? Why am I going through this? You work towards what that heart, that throne, whatever's on that throne. Or some of us, just Monday through Saturday, we have all these things come in and then we sit down on Sunday and we're like, Lord, we need you. And we forget. And maybe the course of your life is not in the direction that it should be because you have the wrong captain on the throne of your life. We read it. God does not look at the outer appearance. He looks at the heart. You must, you must each decide in your heart how much you give. Jesus said it, from your heart all the thoughts come, all the evil thoughts, murder, lying, theft, adultery, lust, all of that comes from the heart. So here's the thing. This morning, we need to dethrone ourselves from the throne and let God take over. We need to dethrone ourselves and let God take over. But today, if we're going to be coming back in the heart of worship where it's all about you, the one who is worthy to be praised... We need to examine ourselves and say, Lord, if there's something that is on the throne of the heart where you belong, where you should be sitting, where you should be controlling, you should say, you know what, I'm going to dethrone that and let you take control. And if something has been on your throne of your heart other than God, and you know it's been hindering your worship, your devotion, the direction of your life, I want to tell you right now that for me, myself, last, the day before I preached the sermon, I had to dethrone myself off the throne of my heart. Even myself, I have to tell God, God, you know what, I'm, I'm preaching this sermon about dethroning myself off the heart, you know, off the throne and you have to be on this throne, but I feel like I'm on this throne trying to dictate my emotions and, and try to please people or I'm trying to make sure that I look good and I make sure the sermon's amazing and people are impacted and you know what, like I'm going to try everything and I'm going to make myself direct my heart. But last night I said, you know what, Lord, no, I want you to take control. And I'm telling you this, hey, I did that last night, I might have to do it Again, tonight. And I might have to do it tomorrow, daily, because you know what? Our hearts are weak. In the Bible, it says not to trust your own understanding. It's because our own understanding will compromise you. Our own wisdom, our own thoughts will compromise us 
That's why it's so important to have a relationship. That's why it's so important to have a devotion. Because every day we have to be able to dethrone the things of our life to make sure God is sitting on the throne of our heart. And I'm telling you, maybe the course of your life and the direction that you're going in, it's prob- and you've probably been feeling, you know what, it's not being the way, it's not the season that I'm going through, it's not the direction that I thought I would be going through. Hey, maybe examine yourself and maybe say, hey, you know what, who's, who's controlling my heart? Who's at the center of the command center directing my emotions, my thoughts? And if there's something that's been on the throne of your heart other than God that's been affecting your worship, that's been affecting your direction of your life, that's your devotion, I want to help you stand with me and pray for you. Because as I pray for you, I believe God's going to start showing us things and you're going to start dethroning things that are not God. You're going to start releasing things in your life and say, God, it is not you I need that dethroned today. Because here's the thing. Worship is a love expressed to God in response to his grace towards us. And it's not worship if it's not love. And it's not love if it's not from the heart. So if you truly love God today, this morning, if you're feeling, God, I love you, you're the only one who, could pay, who paid, and you're the only one who's gone through the necessary things to be at the throne of my heart. You got every degree. You have every doctrine. You got everything, Lord, that you need. You check every box that deserves to be on this throne. God dethrone everything else, whether it's my relationships, my marriage, my career, my job, my successes, my blessings, whatever it is, Lord, that's all counterfeit. It's all fake. That could not be the captain of my heart. And here's the thing. It says, if you seek the kingdom of God, if you seek God first, everything shall be added. What does that mean? If you seek God, if God is at the throne of your heart, Everything that else that we talked about, success, marriage, relationships, all those things, school, whatever it is, will come. And you know what? Like I mentioned before, isn't it better for someone who's controlling your heart, who knows your future, and not what's just in front of them? All of those things that we receive, those blessings, those are what we can see in front of us, but it doesn't control our future. Only one person can, and we know it's God. And we're going to go back to the greatest prophet of them all, and you've heard this verse from me so many times, for God has a plan that will never harm us, never leave us, but give us hope and a future. And this morning, I believe that this week, God is going to start showing you things And you're going to start dethroning everything that is not God. And starting next week, or next week, we're going to be talking about giving some eviction notices. We're going to start evicting idols. We're going to start evicting things that don't have a place in your life. So, back to my question. Let's examine ourselves. This is an examination for myself. I don't come here just sharing a word, and nobody who comes here sharing a word just preaches because we're holy than thou or we're better than you or anything like that. No. I I ask this to myself is, who sits on the throne of my heart? Sometimes when I get angry or sometimes when I get frustrated or sometimes when I get stressed or any of these emotions or any of these thoughts or anything, even like my conscience and the will and the things that I do, I go back and I sit back and I say, is it me that's sitting on the throne? 
Or is it you, God? And if, it, and if it's not you, God, because I can feel it. Because, you know, when God's not on the throne, we do some crazy things. But I said, God, dethrone myself. Let, let me dethrone all the things that have been trying to sit here. And I want you to, to sit on the spot and be the captain, the person who commands and controls all the emotions, all the thoughts, my character, my intellect, my conscious, my will. So let me pray with you today. This is why we have, you know, devotion time and time with God because this is so important because every day you need to kick somebody or something out of the seat. And I wish I had a little box of things and I could kick it for you and show you. But that's why it's so important to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God because there's always something or somebody that needs to be kicked out of that seat because God belongs right there. And today, we'll be coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about God, the one who is worthy to be praised. And if you're watching this morning or whenever you're watching this and you know there's an area of your life right now that there's something else that's been on the throne of your heart, I want to pray with you because you're not the only one. You're not the only one who might be going through this. And I want to pray with you. I want to encourage you this morning to say, God, I need you to dethrone everything in my life and make sure that you're sitting on the throne of my heart. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that you're doing heart surgery on your children. Today, I'm praying that you would change us from the inside out. Everything that has taken your place for whether it's money, marriage, to my family, to our successes, to our careers, to our blessings, that you have been sitting on the throne, that has been sitting on the throne. Today, Lord, we pray that you have your way and you dethrone those things from our heart. We pray, Father, to take control. That, Father, when you're in the seat of the throne, Lord, that you command and that the way you have moved, Lord Jesus. That the way, Lord, Father, that you direct, you know what to do because you know the future. You know what the plan is for us. You have the vision for us. So we just pray right now, this morning, that, Lord, any of those things that are taking over, and it could be other things, Lord. It could be in our anxieties. It could be the stresses of life. It could be the things that are going around in this world, Lord, Father. And if, and if those are the things, Lord, that are on the seat of the throne, you have to remove it, Lord. You got to dethrone it because we want you to take full control. I thank you for today, Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray that those who are new to Christ and are watching this this morning and, Lord, need you in their life, Father, and they're realizing that more and more, Lord, I just pray that thank you for sending Jesus on the cross to die for us, and, you, and he raised again. And, Lord, I pray for my heart, and I pray that you would change us, Lord, that you would renew us, that you would transform us, because we are yours. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. Well, I hope you have been blessed by this morning and have dethroned the things of your lives and have God sitting at the throne of your heart. And I hope I can see you next week as we start sending some eviction notices and evicting idols in our life. We thank you. God bless you. And we'll see you next Sunday.